Hi, I'm Jennifer, 34 years old and married to Jake for just over a year now. Most of my days revolve around my laptop as I teach students from all corners of the globe. Life was cruising along smoothly until, well, it wasn't. Jake and I live in a fantastic house that my parents left me, spacious, cozy, and entirely ours. That was until recently when Jake's parents, Martha and Bob, moved in just down the road. At first, their visits were a pleasant addition, but soon, the pleasantness turned into something far less enjoyable. Martha, with her lifetime badge of housewifery, began nitpicking everything from my cooking to the way I maintained the house. Her standards were astronomically high. Jennifer, darling, this pasta is a bit bland, don't you think? She'd say, scrunching her face like she'd bitten into something sour. And as for the house, she preached about keeping it spotless, insisting, you do want to keep Jake happy, don't you? I bit my tongue a thousand times every time Martha made one of her comments. I tried to explain, hoping for a shred of understanding, but she'd just wave her hand dismissively and say, nonsense. It's about prioritizing. Your job is to take care of the home and Jake, of course. One day, she even had the audacity to inspect Jake's laundry right in front of me. You're letting him wear this. The colors have faded. You're not using the right detergent. I was fuming, my fists clenched so tightly I felt like I could turn coal into diamonds. But I swallowed my anger, trying to keep the peace. Jennifer, they're not staying with us permanently, it's just a visit, I told myself. But those visits felt like they were stretching the fabric of my sanity thinner and thinner. One sunny afternoon, while setting up my laptop for a tutoring session, I heard a truck pull up outside. Peeking through the window, my jaw dropped. There was Jake helping his parents unload boxes and furniture from a massive moving truck. My heart sank. This wasn't happening. Martha, the matriarch, was directing the move with an air of ownership while Bob looked content, not lifting a finger as he surveyed his new domain. Jake caught my eye and gave me an apologetic shrug. I stormed outside. Jake, what on earth is going on? Oh hey babe, surprise, mom and dad are moving in with us. Isn't that great? He was all smiles, completely oblivious to my rising panic and fury. Great. When were you planning on discussing this life-altering decision with me, your wife? I practically spat the words out, incredulous. Calm down, babe. It's just temporary. They're having some financial troubles, and this way, they can rent out their place for extra cash. It's a win-win, Jake said, trying to wrap his arm around me. But I shrugged him off. Martha chose that moment to glide over her pastel cardigan and pearls making her look like a commanding figure. Jennifer, darling, it's so sensible. We're all family here. Plus, you have so much space in this lovely house of yours. It was meant to be shared. Shared? This house was my sanctuary, a gift for my parents who were no longer with us. It wasn't just some communal flop house. I tried to keep my composure, but my voice betrayed me. Martha, with all due respect, this is my house. Don't you think this is something that should have been discussed? Oh, sweetheart, don't be like that. Family helps family. We'll make such lovely memories together, Martha said, patting herself on the back while Bob nodded along, adding his two cents. Yeah, Jennifer, it's about time we all got closer, don't you think? Closer? I was at a loss for words. The arrogance and entitlement were overwhelming. Jake looked between me and his parents, clearly torn. Come on, Jenny, it'll be fine. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is ours, right? Wrong, so very wrong. But as angry as I was, I couldn't bring myself to kick them out immediately. Maybe it was shock or that small voice reminding me of what family meant to Jake. So I did what I'd become an expert at. I swallowed my fury, forced a smile, and welcomed them into my home. As days turned into weeks, the so-called temporary arrangement felt more like a life sentence. Martha and Bob had made themselves completely at home, critiquing my cooking, commenting on my cleaning habits, and generally making my life a living nightmare. Meanwhile, Jake was either at work or playing the role of the oblivious husband. Each day, from the moment I woke up to the second I collapsed into bed, was a marathon of juggling work and the relentless demands of my new housemates. One morning, as I was preparing for an important tutoring session, Martha barged into my makeshift office, a deep frown already etched on her face. Jennifer, this place is a pigsy. When was the last time you dusted? And those cups from yesterday are still in the sink. Martha's voice cut through the quiet, her arms crossed in disapproval. I clenched my jaw. My fingers hovering over the keyboard. Martha, I have back-to-back -back sessions today. 
I'll get to it when I can, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. She huffed, her expression hardening. In my day, we kept a clean house and worked. It's about managing your time better. Managing my time better? I wanted to scream, but instead, I bit my tongue and forced myself to focus on the screen, though it was hard to see through the red haze of my anger. Bob wasn't any better. He had an uncanny knack for needing something right when I was in the middle of explaining complex concepts to my students. Jennifer, where's lunch? I'm starving. He bellowed from the living room, completely ignoring the do not disturb sign on my door. It's in the fridge, Bob. Just warm it up, I replied, my voice strained with the effort to stay polite. What do I look like, a chef? Can't you take a break and fix something yourself? He retorted, his voice booming through the thin walls. Jake, bless him, tried to be the peacemaker, but his efforts often felt like they just added to my frustration. Jenny, can't you just drop it for today? Let's have a quiet dinner, he'd suggest, attempting to smooth over the latest flare-up. Drop it as if I was the one causing all the drama over lunch and dust bunnies. The pinnacle of this daily grind came one evening when I was trying to wrap up my sessions for the day. Martha chose that moment to lecture me on the importance of a tidy home. Jennifer, a cluttered house is a sign of a cluttered mind. Maybe if you tidied up more, you'd be less stressed. Less stressed? I almost laughed at the absurdity. Instead, I stood up and faced her directly. Martha, I'm working. This cluttered office is paying our bills right now. And maybe if you're so concerned about the cleaning, you could help out. Her face turned a shade of red I hadn't seen before. I'm a guest in this house, Jennifer. It's not my job to clean. The word guess echoed mockingly in my mind. Some guess, they were turning my life and home upside down. That night, as I lay in bed staring at the ceiling, I couldn't help but reflect on the absurdity of it all. Here I was, working hard to provide, to teach, and to keep some semblance of peace in my own home, only to be criticized at every turn. Jake's soft snoring next to me was the only sound in the dark room. I turned to look at him, wondering how we ended up here. How did we go from newlyweds excited about our future to barely speaking because his parents were driving a wedge between us? Three months into what felt like the world's longest invasion of privacy, Jake came home early one day, looking as if he had just lost a fight with a bear. Jenny, he began, his voice heavy with fatigue. I got fired, Jake blurted out as soon as he walked in, not even waiting to sit down. His parents were probably out, raking havoc somewhere else, and he made me promise not to tell them just what I needed. Now the burden was entirely on me. My online tutoring gigs were no longer just a way to keep busy or fund a few extras. They were a lifeline. I threw myself into work, stretching my days as thin as possible. Before long, I wasn't just tutoring. I was running my own online school. A small part of me buzzed with pride, but I kept it to myself. No need to add more fuel to the already blazing inferno of our household dynamics. Money was tighter than a jar sealed for a century. Every penny had to be squeezed until it pleaded for mercy before being spent. Eventually, I had to confront Martha and Bob. Look, I know this is awkward, but I need help with the bills. Maybe you could cover half the rent? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Their reaction was as if I'd suggested they fly to the moon. What do you mean? Jake's got it covered. He makes plenty, Bob scoffed, waving off my request as if it were a bad smell. Yeah, about that. I began, but Jake's pleading look stopped me. He wasn't ready for them to know the truth. Later, he pulled me aside, whispering, Just a little longer, Jenny. I'll find something soon. I promise. Promises, right. Meanwhile, I was juggling teaching, cooking, cleaning, and playing referee, all while trying to smile through gritted teeth. Martha and Bob seemed to have turned complaining into an Olympic sport, barging into my office during my tutoring sessions as if I were hosting afternoon tea rather than running a business. Jennifer, this is unacceptable. You're always locked away in here. Why are you going to make time for us? Martha demanded one day, standing in the doorway with her arms crossed while I was in the middle of explaining algebra to a 15-year-old. Martha, I'm working. Can this wait? I hissed, trying to keep my voice down. No, it can't. We're family and you're neglecting us, she shot back, oblivious to the fact that I was trying to make ends meet. Bob wasn't any better. When's dinner? We're starving, and you're just sitting around, he grumbled on another occasion, completely ignoring the stack of papers and open textbooks around me. Sitting around, really, Bob? I snapped, frustration bubbling up despite my best efforts to stay composed. 
I'm teaching right now, and dinner is whenever you make it. I snapped, my patience fraying like an old rope. Jick was always apologetic, constantly whispering, thanks for holding us together, Jenny. It'll get better, but better felt like a distant dream, one we were never getting closer to. As days turned into weeks, I wondered how much longer I could keep this up. One evening, as we sat down for dinner, Martha pulled out a glossy travel brochure, her eyes sparkling. Look at this, dear, she said, sliding the booklet across the table to me. We're thinking of a little getaway. A vacation. What do you think? A scarf or a shell as a souvenir? Before I could even process the absurdity of her question, she dropped another bomb. Darling, if you could spare two thousand dollars for us, that would be just peachy. Just for some pocket money, you know. I stared at her, dumbfounded. My fork clattered onto my plate, my appetite completely vanished. Spare two thousand dollars? I echoed, incredulous. For a vacation? Bob nodded as if this was the most reasonable request in the world. Yeah, you know, for the little extras. We wouldn't want to miss out on the fun stuff. The room spun. This was beyond outrageous. It felt like they were living in a fantasy world where money grew on trees and I was their gardener. I couldn't hold back any longer. How long do you plan to live at my expense? I demanded, my voice rising. You don't pay for anything. No rent, no groceries, and now you want me to fund your vacations too. Martha and Bob exchanged glances, clearly taken aback by my outburst. Well, we thought Jake was handling all that, Bob said, trying to sound innocent. I turned to Jake, my eyes blazing. And what about you? Do you think this is okay? Jake squirmed in his seat, mumbling something incoherent. Not only that, I continued, steamrolling ahead, you barge into my office, interrupt my work, and have zero respect for my personal space. I've had it. There was a tense silence. Finally, Jake, his face a mask of frustration, spoke up. Why are you talking to my parents like that? They're just trying to enjoy life. Enjoy life on my hard-earned money? I snapped back. I shot back, disbelief lacing my words. That's when Martha, ever the germanist, began her performance. Tears welled up in her eyes as she wailed about my ingratitude. After all we've done for you, we even told Jake he should have divorced you despite everything. The word divorce sliced through the tension like a knife. I turned to Jake, my heart pounding in my throat. Is that true? Jake's face went from red to white, a guilty look flashing in his eyes before he averted his gaze. Seizing the moment, Martha clutched at her chest and gasped dramatically. My pills are upstairs, please. Concern washed over me despite my anger. I stood up abruptly, the need to ensure she was okay momentarily overshadowing my fury. Fine, I'll get your medicine, I said leaving the dining room in a daze. My mind raced with accusations, deceit, and now this talk of divorce. My world seemed to be unraveling thread by thread, leaving me to pick up the pieces. I had barely reached the top of the stairs when I realized I didn't even know which medicine Martha needed. Turning back, I was unprepared for what I overheard. Jake's voice, usually warm and familiar, was barely a whisper yet every word struck like a hammer. Mom, you nearly blew it tonight. We need to get her to sell the house first. Talking about divorce now will just spook her. My heart stopped. Divorce. Sell my house. The pieces clicked together in a jarring mosaic of betrayal. Martha's voice hissed in response. I know, I know, but keeping up this charade is exhausting. She's not as clueless as you think. Jake's voice was insistent, almost desperate. Just stick to the plan. Make things hard for her, unbearable even. She'll cave and sell the house to get away from me, and then we can do whatever we want. But not before. If she divorces me now, I get nothing from the sale. The coldness in his voice, the calculated manipulation, it was all laid bare. My knees felt weak, my heart shattered. This was their plan. My husband and his parents plotting against me in my own home. Jake continued. Oblivious to my silent presence, we'll be set once this is done. Sell the old place too, and we can finally get something better. Just lay off the big purchases for now. Don't draw any attention. I stood there, frozen, a statue of disbelief and hurt. They were supposed to be my family. How could they do this? At the dining room door, I paused, gathering my composure. The mask of ignorance was now my best defense. When I walked back in, I found Martha clutching her chest, her distress as convincing as ever. Oh dear, I forgot to ask which medicine you needed. I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Martha quickly shifted her act. It's all right, dear. I just need a moment. 
It's the excitement of the evening, you know. Jake glanced at me, something flickering in his eyes. Was it guilt or fear? I couldn't tell. Everything okay, Jenny? He asked. I met his gaze, a hollow laugh echoing inside me. Fine. Just tired, I guess. It's been a long day. As we finished dinner in silence, my mind raced. They didn't know I knew their plans and I intended to keep it that way. For now, I would play the part, bide my time, and plan my next move carefully. They wanted a game, they get one, but on my terms. The next morning, I didn't waste any time. I canceled my classes feeling a mix of nerves and determination. Today wasn't about teaching, it was about reclaiming my life. My first stop was the lawyer's office. I laid everything out. The deception, the manipulation, their plans against me. He reassured me, explaining that the law protected my inheritance. My house was mine alone, divorce or not. With divorce papers in hand, I headed back home, my resolve strengthening with every step. The scene that greeted me was predictably frustrating. Martha immediately started in on me. Where have you been all day? We've been waiting for you to make dinner, she snapped, her voice dripping with disdain. I met her gaze, my patience worn thin. I'm not your cook or your maid. That ends now. Jake attempted to smooth things over, his voice too casual. Maybe this is a sign we should sell the house and start fresh somewhere else. His parents nodded eagerly, clearly liking where this was going. I couldn't help it. I laughed. The absurdity of it all. Their faces. It was too much. Oh Jake, I know about your plan. All of it. Silence crashed down like a wave. Jake's face went white and Martha's mouth snapped shut. What plan? Jake managed, his voice shaky and guilty. Taking a deep breath, I laid the divorce papers on the table. This plan, we're done. I want you and your parents out of my house. The outrage was immediate. Martha was the first to explode. You can't do this. We're family. Family doesn't plot against each other. I shot back, my voice firm. Jake tried to argue, to plead. But I was unmoved. I'm not falling for it, Jake. It's over. I've already spoken to a lawyer. His defeat was evident as he realized the gravity of the situation. They had no legal ground to stand on, no emotional manipulation left to play. Reluctantly, with anger and frustration boiling over, Jake and his parents packed their things and left. After they were gone, the silence in the house was deafening, but it was the sound of freedom. I sat alone in the dining room, the echoes of their departure still resonating off the walls. It was over. I could finally breathe again, but the weight of what had transpired hung heavily in the air. I wasn't sure what to do with myself. The routine I had been so accustomed to, despite its toxicity, was gone. I decided to call my best friend Sarah. If anyone could understand, it was her. Hey, it's me. I said when she picked up. Jennifer, what's wrong? You sound off. Sarah's voice was filled with concern. I laughed a mix of relief and disbelief in my tone. You won't believe what's happened. Jake and his parents, they're gone. I kicked them out. Sarah's surprise was evident. Girl, what happened? So I told her everything, from the overheard conversation to the visit to the lawyer and the final showdown. As I spoke, the reality of my newfound freedom began to sink in. Wow, Jennifer, that's... I don't even know what to say. Are you okay? She asked after a moment of silence. Yeah, I think I am. Better than I've been in a long time, I admitted, a smile spreading across my face. We chatted a bit longer, her support lifting my spirits even further. Hanging up, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The house felt different now, it was truly mine again. I could do whatever I wanted with it, fill it with new memories, maybe even redecorate. The days that followed were a blur of activity. I started making small changes around the house, clearing out reminders of Jake and his parents. With each box I packed away, I felt lighter, more in control of my destiny. I also threw myself into my online school, pouring every ounce of energy into something that was truly mine. It wasn't just a distraction. It was a lifeline, pulling me out of the murky waters of betrayal and onto solid ground. My students, my lessons, they gave me purpose and a reason to look forward to each day. One afternoon, as I was prepping for a webinar that had garnered interest from corners of the globe I'd only dreamed of reaching, my phone rang. The screen flashed Martha's name, a name I hadn't seen or thought about in what felt like a lifetime. Curiosity overcame me, and I answered, bracing myself for whatever came next. Jennifer, dear, it's Martha. We need your help, she stammered, 
her voice laced with a desperation I'd never heard from her before. I hesitated, memories of their betrayal flashing bright and hot. What's happened? Our house, the one we rented out, it's gone. It burned down because of some electrical fault and, well, the insurance, she trailed off, the weight of her omission hanging between us. And you didn't pay the insurance on time, so now you're left with nothing. I finished for her, not without a trace of cold satisfaction. Yes, exactly. We were wondering, hoping really, that maybe we could stay with you just for a little while, she pressed, each word more desperate than the last. The audacity of her request left me speechless for a moment. After everything, they still saw me as a safety net, their backup plan. I found my voice steadier and colder than I intended. No, Martha, that's not possible. You're strangers to me now. Later, through the grapevine of mutual acquaintances, I learned about Jake's new reality. He'd taken a job far below the expectations and lifestyle he once held dear, just to scrape together enough for a roof over their heads and the basics. Part of me wanted to take satisfaction in his fall from grace, but another, deeper part of me just felt tired, tired of the anger, the resentment. It was time to truly move on. 